Hi guys. This is D. Igorotech. Today, I will show you how to install and how to use UltraViewer. UltraViewer is a legitimate remote access software which allows users to connect and control systems or other computers over the internet. Let's begin. First is I will show you how to download and install the UltraViewer application. Open your web browser. Search for Download UltraViewer. Choose the first option which is from their official website. You will be automatically redirected to the download page. During the time of this recording, the latest version is 6.6.41. We have three options. First options is to download the executable file. This means we need to install the application. Second is the portable file. If you choose this option then no need to install the application, just simply extract and run the application. Lastly the documents and tutorials. I only use the portable file if I'm restricted to install an application. I recommend you to download and install the executable file for stability and to avoid unusual errors. Click download and it will automatically download the executable file. Let's check the downloaded file. The file name is UltraViewer followed by the application version. Now, double click on it to run the executable file. We're not going to change the installation folder so click next to proceed. We will leave the installation to default so click next. I want to create shortcut icon on desktop so I will leave the option checked. You can see the installation details. Now, click install to proceed. Wait for it to complete the installation process. Notice the shortcut icon automatically created on desktop. The installation has been completed. Check the box if you want to automatically launch the application once you click finish. Here's what the application looks like. Let's start with the user ID and password. These are the details you will give your partner if you would like to allow them to remote control your device. For the password, you can generate new password if you want. Also you can change the password length. By default, it's 5 digits. You can change to 6 or 8 digits. Well, of course, the longer the better. You also have the option to disable random password. This depends on your preference. Next is the unattended access. This means, they can access your device anytime anywhere once they already have your UltraViewer ID and password. We have a few options under this category. You can enable Run UltraViewer with Windows. This means, the UltraViewer application will automatically launch every time you start your computer. Next is Prevent Windows from going to sleep. This option will not allow your computer to go to sleep, it will keep on running even though it's idled for too long. We also have the option to allow Turn on Computer Remotely. If you enable this option then your partner can turn it on remotely as long as they have the UltraViewer ID and password. Next is the custom password. This is the password they will use to remotely access this device. Click on the key logo to configure the password. For the computer name, you can set it to automatically retrieve from computer name, automatically retrieve from account name and you can also create your own name. I will set it to default which is my computer name. Now, enter your desired password. You need also to confirm your password. Click OK to save the changes. Now, you can give the UltraViewer ID and the unattended password to your partner for them to connect anytime, anywhere. At the top, you can see the application version. Under File, you can view the logs. Close Remote Desktop, Restart UltraViewer and exit or close the application. Under Settings, this is where you change the language. Let's check the options. Choose Remote Session. We have the option to show remote wallpaper. We will check this one later. Go to Security tab. Here, you can also specify the password length, same as what we did earlier. You may set what happens if you click the X button to close the Ultra Viewer. I usually leave it to default. You can choose based on your preference. Scroll down and you will see blacklist and whitelist. Click on blacklist and whitelist configure. 
this is where you blacklist and whitelist ultra viewer IDs. Example is if you want to block ultra viewer ID. Click on add. Enter the ultra viewer ID you want to block then click OK. This ultra viewer ID will be blocked from connecting to this device. You can also whitelist allow ultra viewer ID to connect to this device. It's the same process. Click on add then input the ultra viewer ID you want to allow or whitelist. To delete ultra viewer ID, tick on it to select then tick delete or clear. Next is access. This is where you can also configure or edit the unattended password. Input your new password then click OK to apply. Next is the chat settings. By default, chat suggestions and auto lean new phrases are enabled. Under chat history. This is where the chat logs has been stored. You can change the storage path if you prefer. Under password storage. This is where you clear connection history and password. Also you can change the password storage duration. Lastly, extras. It is recommended to enable auto install update for it to receive new updates, fix bugs and install new features. Now, we will try to remote access to my other laptop. Let's open the ultra viewer. Here is the ultra viewer ID. We will configure the unattended password. I will input any password for this demo, but if you are configuring the unattended password, make sure to input a complex password for better security. I will now copy the ultra viewer ID and make sure you remember or you have the unattended password. I will go back to my other laptop. At the bottom, you can see the green dot and it says ready to connect. This means the application is online and ready to connect or remote access. Under control a remote computer, I will enter the remote partner ID and password, this are the one we configured on my other laptop. Make sure to input the correct details. Behind the connect to partner, click on the down arrow, we have the option to turn on PC remotely. This is if your remote partner enabled allow turn on computer remotely. Let's now try to connect. Simply click on connect to partner. Now we are connected. I did not accept on my other computer because we use the unattended password. Let's maximize the window. Let's check the features. Under actions, you can send a command control alt delete to the remote host. We also have the option to remote restart the remote host. Next is the options. You can choose which monitor what you want to view. We can also change the display quality. You can change to optimize speed and also optimize quality. These are if you have a good internet connection. We also have the option to customize the display quality. Next is the screen size. By default it is set to best scaled. You can choose full screen if you prefer. We also have the option for stretchable. I will go back to best scale for us to view the changes and we can also drag or reposition the window. Next is the computer sound which is not available for free version. It's only available for licensed versions. Next is show remote wallpaper. Instead of just black screen, we can view the actual remote wallpaper. The next one is show remote cursor. This is also useful because we can see the remote cursor if they are moving the cursor or maybe having some demonstration. However, if we are doing the remote, we can see there's a bit of shadow on the cursor. I will disable it for this demo. Next is the screen tab. If you choose capture part of the screen then you will choose which part you want to capture. Once done then you have the option to cancel, copy or save. Let's choose save. At the bottom taskbar, notice that there's a pop-up message. Screen captured and saved followed by the destination folder. We also have the option to capture full screen. This will capture the full screen, it's the same with print screen. It will also automatically save to the default folder. We also have the option to record video but this is not available for free versions. Next is open contain folder. This is where you view the screenshots you have taken. You can see the two screenshots we have captured. The first one is we captured part of the screen. The second one is we captured the full screen. Next is the chat. You can use this to chat or send message to the remote host and they can also respond back to your message. You also have the option to attached file. Simply click on attached file. 
locate the file then click send. Next is we will check the small panel. The first one is if you want to reposition the small panel, simply click, hold and drag where you want to reposition the panel. The second one is to switch to full screen. The last one is to hide the top panel window. You can click it back again to unhide the panel. Click back maximize tab to switch back to best scale. To end or close the remote session, simply click on the X sign. Well, that's all for today's demonstration and I really hope you liked this video. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the notification bell for more amazing tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next video.